um, gave the abstract, I was a bit scared because uh, part of the, uh, well, one of the questions was, how will uh, I engage the audience? Um, so actually, I, gi I give some, some extra. Um, and I thought that this may be a good, uh, um, good way to, to go about it. So before I start, um, how many of you um, have taught a geometry class? OK, great. So how many have taught uh, using IBL? OK, great, excellent. Um, I want to start by uh, telling you a bit about myself um, such that you can put um, my presentation in context. Uh, the title is, and, and the main point is with uh, um, how to use axioms to construct to, to get students better at proofs. Share you a few uh, lessons that, that I learned and then um, use um, some, some assessment to, to make, uh, uh, try to answer this, the, the research question that uh, I proposed. I, I, need, I need some, some numbers, I need a, a certain assessment. And at the level of uh, uh, just uh, feedback from the students, I'll, I'll give you, show you some, some of uh, the feedback that I received. So I got interested in guided discovery in 2003. I was fortunate enough to, to meet uh, uh, Ken Bogart, and he uh, introduced me to the math method. It was a sort of uh, love at first sight. Uh, the, the next fall, I taught uh, the real analysis uh, class using this. I wrote also a, a, a paper that uh, got published in uh, uh, the journal Focus. Now, for various reasons, I did not, I, I do believe that for the guided discovery or the IBL to work, it needs to be implemented over the entire semester. So I did portions of it, uh, but definitely not the entire uh, of, for, for a full semester. Now, in the past uh, three years, I got involved uh, um, in, in teaching uh, ge uh, the geometry class. So um, remember, I still remember when I gave the, the drafts of the real analysis paper, um, presented it to Bill McCallum and a few other people at the University of Arizona. Um, they, they say, oh, this is Moore method. And I... Uh, knew about the conference, I, I want to, to thank the organizer, and I'm, I'm happy that I, I participate finally to, uh, to this conference. So I, I knew about it, uh, but never attended it. And also I'm here to, to sort of catch up for the eight, uh, uh, more, more than eight years that I, I missed, so le learn from the, the developments that, that happened uh, in, in this period. So now, Adrian College, a small uh, Michigan, small liberal arts college, about 1,600 enrollment. The class is taken at junior, senior level, um, uh, and small size, about 50% of the students are pre-service uh, students. Now, the pre-calculus is, uh, the, the prerequisite is calculus two, uh, but most students come in with, with linear algebra. Our department does not offer an introduction to uh, to proof course, um, and many of the students uh, are not even taking discrete mathematics. This is something that now we uh, changed, so it will become a, a, a prerequisite for, for this class. So very little um, uh, proof uh, techniques. Now the sort of the content, uh, because there, there is no, uh, the, the, the students did not have a, a formal introduction to proofs, I feel like I should uh, spend some time with logic. It, it used to be just a week doing uh, propositional, conditionals, biconditionals, sort of basic type of proofs. But uh, as, as, I, as I taught this class, it became very clear that I need to, to address quantifiers. So that puts it around two weeks. So then there are two, three weeks of, uh, of axioms, and um, they are also uh, the axioms are also discussed in sort of the, uh, the, the general topics of the, uh, of, of the class. So we, we have con congruent triangles, parallel lines, areas, similar triangles, and I uh, 
circles, triangle geometry, and advanced uh, tri uh, triangle geometry. Uh, I do take about a week of labs. I, uh, I, I found a geometer sketch pad quite useful um, in terms of giving an extra tool to the students to, to try to explore, um, make, make uh, conjectures, explore, uh, very quickly modify the setting much quicker than they would do on, uh, on paper. Uh, and they, they, are, they are midterm. So it's, this leaves with, with about 10 weeks of guided discovery. What, what do I mean? It's, it's a terminology, right? So it falls under the, the IBL. The, the students work in groups. The, the cooperative uh, aspect is the, the most important one. Very few, excuse me, very few presentations, actually. Um, so uh, I, I don't mind if somebody wants to come to the board, present it to the entire class, but it's, it's the, the group work that is uh, uh, important. I move from, from group to group, and I, and I hear and, uh, to, to the discussions. Uh, because of the pre-service students, I, I feel like I uh, need to designate a textbook, and that's the one uh, geometry the theorems and constructions. It's, it's geared toward... Um, uh, pre-service, it covers the topics that are um, uh, required. Um, I, I think it's in the, the authors are from Illinois, but they, they, they cover well the, the, the topics uh, in, in the certification exams. Um, because I used that very little mentions of the axioms in that book, I, I wanted to, to use the axiom I was influenced by the uh, Green, Greenberg uh, book. Um, I like content is important for me, and in this class I spend a lot, decent amount of time with geometric construction, loci, and uh, uh, the, the use of geometer sketchpad. And I know this normally comes into mind, okay, where is the, what does Guided Discovery uh, play the role, and how it's uh, in terms of grade at the end, uh, calculate it. So there is a comprehensive final, 200 points. There are midterms. Two, I gave also three. Now, there is a weekly homework, and here cooperation is uh, accepted in the sense that I don't want the, the students to, to copy from one another, but it's okay if they discuss the assigned uh, within the context of their, their own group or otherwise. So it's, uh, I'm, I'm fine with, with that. The tendency is normally just to uh, th those are three points. I only had one student in these three years that did not uh, made an effort to attend less than uh, half of the classes. So attendance is not a, a problem. Uh, now, this is one place where, for in terms of how, how are the students uh, evaluated, I give them the chance to evaluate their, their group, uh, their team uh, members. So one third of the uh, semester at, at midterms, uh, I asked them to, to give me uh, assign grades to, to your uh, group members. How much do you think they contributed on a scale from one to five? And then they have the, the sort of the, the assign grades to, to their, uh, their peers. And then, <clears throat> and, and this is something that I, I find uh, useful, especially for the pre-service uh, students, uh, for the math head, I want them to uh, in the group discussions, we don't have time to finish all the, uh, the, the arguments. I don't write complete arguments many times on the board. So I do want them to, to keep uh, one, uh, one solution for a problem or something like this, but to have a binder and sort of, as we move on in the semester, to, uh, to keep the, uh, their work, the proofs, uh, in, in one, one place. And this, this, again, it's sort of uh, funneled into the... Uh, the grade. So this is, this is what I, um, uh, the, the setup of, of the class. Um, so now why, uh, initially when I first um, taught the, uh, the, the class, I did not use, so I follow sort of the, uh, the book and there is not uh, much use of, of, of axioms. So why, uh, why should we do uh, axioms? Well, first of all, I believe that the math majors uh, 
probably everybody took a, a geometry class in high school. All the students are asked to take some geometry. So it's not that they don't uh, know congruent triangles, similar triangles, Pythagorean theorems. Uh, but they, they should be aware that there is a way to, to construct from bottom up, if you want, the, the, the results, and also the existence of this uh, uh, non-Euclidean geometries. And then a sort of a research question for, my, uh, uh, for, for this project, or it's do this discussion and study of, uh, of axioms in a limited, rather limited way, uh, prepare better, uh, so, so does the discussion prepare better the, the students in reading and writing proofs? I don't have an answer to, uh, to this, uh, this question yet, but I, I will show you some, uh, some, some steps uh, that uh, some, a bit of progress with that. So now, let's, let's just jump into it. So we, we spent two, uh, uh, two weeks or something like this of, uh, uh, of logic. Uh, and now this is really the first handout. So what you have here on the, the board is, is the first handout, the first day uh, of axioms. So, this is, an, this is a discussion about the incidence axioms, right? So the first one, given any two points, there exists a unique line, L, that uh, joins P and Q. Uh, for every line, there exists a list of points distinct on, on the line. And in the plane, there exist at least three distinct points that do not lie on the same line. So we spent some time understanding and sort of drawing pictures on or what the axioms say. And then the students just have five uh, problems to, to work on. I, I audio tape the students. It's a real pleasure to listen to them at their talks at this stage because the level of confusion is um, pretty, pretty high. And I, I claim that, so if you, in the summary, I mentioned something about quantifiers. So I claim that the quantifiers are important. Now, why do you think the quantifiers are important? Even, it says, for every point and every point Q. So sort of just to understand all of this, it, you, you, one needs the, the quantifiers. So that's, that's exactly right. So they are all sort of set up in the quantifier world. Now, here's another, and I, I know it's a not uh, a very good uh, uh, scan there, but this is a sort of another uh, reason. So this is a, a towers the, the fourth week of class. It's, it's a theorem. So the, what, what I liked uh, about this approach, what sort of drew me through it, is that I, I said, it's, let's do a, as a sort of a game with the students. We start with the axioms, and then we try to see to build up what we can do. And actually, the, uh, the results, they, they build up. As we, as we move on, the, the list of results that we know is it's larger and larger. So this is, for example, work of a student for, for this result number 15. It, he's calling it uh, axiom there. <clears throat> so now, this is, uh, you know, we, we already covered the betweenness axiom. So it says if B is between A and C, and C is between A and D, then uh, actually C is between B and D. So the, the, it's about the location of the points on, on the line. So the student starts with something like, give an arbitrary line L by incidence axiom two, the one that we discussed where on each line there are two distinct points, there exist two distinct points. He finds the points and then concludes that that line is BD. Oh, and then he's using the, the, the betweenness axiom and so on, so it just involves the axioms. And then he says, therefore, I mean, exactly what he wanted to, to do, therefore that happens. Now, the student is really confused here, and it's confused, he's confused for the, the, the axioms, they, they are complicated, and also is this entire uh, uh, terminology with the quantifiers and so on. So this is very, it's, it's basically a zero work there. But we are at the beginning, right? So uh, that, that's fine. So this is why quantifiers uh, are important. So let me give you, so this is that first day of class, right? So let's say we have the axioms here, the incidence axioms. And then we, we want to prove what was number six on that. For every line, there is at least one point not lying on it. Yes? So for every line, there is a point not lying on it. And here is an abbreviated 
a transcript of the, of the discussion within the group. So that's, that's what I love from the very beginning, having the students, so it on, the, on that art of mathematics, having the students sort of discuss among, um, among themselves. So the student, remember, for every line there is one point, no line group. First start with axiom three. Yeah, the student agrees. Then we put the axiom one, I say, yeah, right, and, uh, and then pretty much, and there is some mumbling there, and they even re, uh, recall axiom two. But after some, maybe a minute or so, they have a plan. They say, so we start axiom three, we start with three points. By axiom one, we have a line going through two of them. And now, the other point is not on the line. Comment a little bit, but they seem to be happy with the argument. Now, is this argument okay for what we try to prove? For every line, where, where is the line that we have? So again, the, sort of the quantifiers here. But, so, so they, the first day of class, when we do this, sort of the first day of geometry, so that, that's okay, it's, it's understandable. There, there is always somebody that uh, crashes the party, one of the members in the, the group, it says, well, I feel that this, actually the, their entire good argument is just number three restated, right? Axiom number three restated. The other student says, well, it could be other than that, other than that axiom three has three distinct points and this one just saying we have to assume that line has two points, yeah, and then they come back to their uh, argument, that sort of wrong, wrong argument. And now, the, the Later on, a student, actually because we talked about proof by contradiction, is actually saying, well, we can do this by contradiction. And he says, because we can say for every line there is no point lying on it, but because of axiom three, axiom three contradicts that. I really find this as a sort of blue one, as a sort of a gem there, the first class. The student, without knowing the quantifiers and how to negate the quantifiers, sort of is trying to do something and it, she's already exactly on the right track because it is the contradiction will come from axiom three. And now, again, coming back to, to my, my quantifiers, I think what happens here, and I'm trying to address as, as we move on, uh, are this, so failing to realize that the statement uh, six is, doesn't matter for every line, there exists a point that's not on the line. So, Putting it in this formalism, as abstract as it looks like, actually will make the proof simpler as we, uh, as we, as we go on. Yeah? Let's, let's practice a bit uh, from, from your handout. This, um, the <coughs> statement, the very first p uh, page, where that's, so, so which of these, these axioms uh, can we, uh, uh, if I were to have a model where the, what we call points are lines in the Euclidean uh, 3D space, and lines are, are planes in the, uh, so lines are planes. Incidence is the, the regular line lying on a plane. So which of these ex uh, incidence axioms uh, do you think uh, uh, are, are satisfied? So incidence axiom one, for every point to given, given two distinct points, there is a line, unique line, containing uh, both of them. Is that satisfied? Why not? Skew lines. Skew lines. Okay, so that, uh, so now, accidents two, for every line, do we have distinct points on it? Two distinct points on it. That is true. So now, this is a, I assign it's, it's longer it's, it's, as it's in the, uh, the handout, so this is assigned as a homework. It, it will take a time, it's, it's part of one of the, the weekly assignments. I want the students to go and think about them, then come back and uh, we, we can rediscuss this in class. This is even a, a good, good problem to sort of uh, discuss it uh, later on uh, in the semester. sort of revise, let's say the, the final is comprehensive, how do we uh, re review the, the axioms and... Okay, so what are the sources of axioms? They're, they're in, the, in the description is that uh, the, 
use of axioms. I, I extend this a little bit, for example, in the definition of area, really how, how, this, is, uh, how this is nicely, uh, probably the, the, the best expressed is using as a, as a finitely additive measure. This is what is here. But somebody can say the, the definition of the area contains three axioms, those A1, A2, and three. And I would like to see them, the, this axiom, argued if in, in a proof when the, the additivity is, is done, so when you break a polygon, uh, a polygon into, uh, into geometric figures, that this is they refer by axiom two or by additivity of the area. That's something that I want to see it uh, appearing in the, uh, in, in their, uh, in their uh, proof. Students have, uh, have the possibility to, to practice all, all of these, the, the, the use of axioms, the use of, uh, uh, of logic, and, uh, and so on. And now, just to, uh, I, I have to finish here. Um, the, in terms of assessment of the method, um, I'm a bit, um, um, how, to, how to say, uh, devised, because um, some, some of the students really like the method. Some of, uh, some of them, they miss uh, lecture. They were only, uh, the, the, the only teaching that they had was through lecturing, and they feel uh, that uh, they, they should have some, some lecturing uh, as well, which you know, I do if they ask a few minutes at the beginning or at the end as a sort of a wrap-up. But um, it's um, probably because of the different type of learning uh, just uh, the, the guided discovery or IBL may not be uh, a perfect method for, for everybody, but I still think it's, it's, a, it's an excellent uh, way to keep the, the students engaged. Thank you.